Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at a really cool tool, and one of those things that's all the rage right now is procedural generation. So what we're looking at today is the procedural city generator. Now what this one looks like from, you know, a thousand miles away is a 2D map generator, but there's oh so much more to this one. So what you want to do if you want to check this one out is head on over to your web browser and head to itch.io, specifically to probabletrain.itch.io forward slash city dash generator. Of course, I will link that in the linked article down down below. This one is an open source project. We'll get back to that in a little bit. And if you like what they do, they're also being supported on Patreon. So when you first see it, it looks like it creates simple 2D maps. And actually, yes, it does that. It actually uses a procedural generation algorithms to uh, create cityscapes with roads and buildings and parks and rivers and lakes and so on. Um, but you can also use it to export out 3D models, which is actually something we're going to look at in this video as well. So when you are ready, just go ahead and hit that run generator and it will bring you to this form. Uh, now what you're seeing here is a bunch of tensor fields. And these are, so you sort of see your city center being generated here. We can kind of drag it around and really influence on how our city is going to be created. Also the level of zoom, the amount that you are zoomed in is going to determine the, um, the level of detail on your city. So the more you zoom in, the uh, smaller your city blocks are going to be. But what you can do is basically drag around these tensor fields and it will sh um, influence the flow of the city itself. You can sort of see like a top level effect of these fields in action right here. But when you are content with what they have done and all these various different other options here, there, there's a recommended order on the website basically. Uh, start with the water, make sure you like it, then move from there, and then city buildings and so on. All I'm going to do is drop a bunch of tensor fields in and then click generate. So what this is now going to do is procedurally generate me a city. Uh, we almost always seem to be a city by the shore. So I guess this one is like, uh, I don't know, kind of like Toronto. We got the waterfront here. We got a little bit of a lake coming in here. We got a couple of roads going on here. Um, and you know what, if you don't like this, you could just basically create a brand new one. You could also zoom out, generate it, create something a little bit bigger. Uh, you can swap out with how the water is being done. So for example, if you find there is too much water in this one, you can drop down here, go to water, and you could generate it again. And really, this is kind of where they recommend start with. It's also really lightweight. So you just keep hitting until you get a nice amount of water going on. Like so, because that last one, we actually had a fair bit of water. You also got control over coasts and rivers, etc. So, you know, what? we'll go ahead with this one. You got the same thing you could do for uh, parks in the lands. So we could set some park land up in here, uh, major and minor entries. And then when you're happy, go ahead and click generate again, and it will use those preset settings for you. So here is a result, sort of see like a classic spoke wheel hub as things evolve, and then the natural lead out from it. Now this particular style can be changed, obviously. We can come over here and you see color scheme. It's a strange name there because there's more to it than just color scheme. Uh, right now we're on default. It's sort of like a hand-drawn. We can also go to a more hand-drawn, kind of like that. Uh, we can have it look like Apple Maps. Maps. We can have it look like uh, Google Maps, or we can actually even have it look like Google 3D here. And as you zoom in and out, you're getting the 3D models that are generated. So that is how you go about generating your cityscape. And then again, if you just wanted to do this and save it out as an image, so you see download here, we can just save this out as a ping file. So if you just created like a 2D level map, uh, you can just create it in various different ways here, various different styles or looks. Uh, or you could create it like a paper drawn map. You got all kinds of 2D options available here. Um, but what you could also do is spit it out as a height map, which you could then extrude out in your program of choice. But what we're going to do instead is bring this one out kind of like this. We're going to bring this out as STL files. Now, this is going to be a little bit annoying to work with at times, but I'm going to showcase how to do this. So uh, go ahead, grab the STL file. Let me drop out of the, uh, so you see right there, it is downloaded called model two. Let's go ahead and show that in the folder and we'll extract that out. So let's extract the contents of that guy uh, to yeah, model two dot zip. Sure, good to go. So here we go. And what you're gonna see is we've got a number of different layers for our model. So let me just change that so the name doesn't get confusing later on for me. All right, here we go. So. We've got all the different layers. We're only going to use a couple of them, mostly for time's sake. And to put these together, I'm going to use Blender. Now, there's instructions for this. Unfortunately, they use Blender 2.79. And one of the, the few real regressions that happened with Blender 2.8 is they took out the Boolean tool that this used. So the instructions won't work for you if you are using Blender 2.8. However, Blender 2.91, which is currently in beta, 
has a new Blender feature. So that's what we're going to look at today. So we're going to use Blender 2.91 for this. Hopefully, uh, this will be released very soon. Otherwise, you have to use Blender 2.7 something, 2.79 or later. So here's our scene. Let's kill the default cube. And now we're going to start bringing things in. So go in here, go File, Import, STL. And the first one you're going to want to bring in is the domain. So let's go ahead and find that guy. That's downloads. It's model. Oops, I missed. Model 2. Model 2. Okay. So what you see here is domain. You can think of that as all that I survey is my domain. All right. So there is our domain. Uh, it, it's pretty basic. It is basically, uh, uh, well, it's a flat rectangle. So now what I'm going to do is a little bit of work to get this looking good. So first off, hit tab to go into edit mode. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do an extrude and then hit enter. Now, normally what I'd like to do is just extrude and pull it out along a certain direction. Unfortunately, you can't extrude Z axis of a zero width object. I just discovered that by the way, which is annoying. But now that I just extruded out, we got a new face and I'm going to hit the G key the Z key, and then one. So what I did is I just moved our freshly extruded faces out one in the Z axis. So as you can see, here is the end result. We have a bit of a square. Hit tab, and we're going to leave it. So there is our base model. So now what we're going to do is bring in the water. So we're going to do this by going File, Import, STL, and that is called C. So this is like the big water here. You can see how it is cut out. So now I'm going to do a couple of things here. First off, I want it to be slightly elevated so that it goes beyond the bounds of our map. So when we cut it out, it will cut everything. So I'm going to hit G and then Z and then 0 0.1. And that just moved it up really, really slightly. So now I'm going to hit tab to go into um, edit mode, hit extrude and then enter. And then I'm going to do a G, a Z and then 1. So what I've just done is basically extruded. So I moved it up just slightly and then I extruded all of the faces up a little bit more. Actually, I could go a little bit more. So I'm going to do G0 1.1 instead. So G0 and since I've already done it, so 0.1. All right, there we go. So we're slightly out of the bounds of our original shape. And then now hit tab to move out of that. So there we have our two objects working together. There is our domain and there is our C. Now what we have to do is subtract our C from our domain. This is where the Boolean, Booleans come in. So select the domain like so. Go to the modifiers, this little wrench icon right here, and just go ahead and then uh, we want to do a Boolean. So this is what was added in 2.91 is this new functionality. So exact is slow but accurate. So what I'm going to do is with different selected, go ahead and pick C. So now what we've done is basically cut the C from our domain. And we can go ahead and there's the end result. Uh, I actually did that backwards. <laughs> There we go. So C is gone. Domain is there. So now that's what we've got. So if you really want to at this point in time, you can hit, you can select the C and just delete it. And you can repeat this process for the other things. So for example, we come in here, there's also import uh, STL. You'll see here you have the rivers. So for example, I could bring this river in. Uh, and once again, we could go ahead and edit it extrude, uh, let's do Z 1.1, went the wrong way. But there you see, basically you, you bring your rivers in and then you start cutting them out. Uh, one thing I find, once again, you cannot do an extrude on a zero width Z axis. It's very irritating. It's going to make this process really annoying. But what you do is basically just keep bringing these in and then differencing them out. There's also one there for coastline um, and you do the opposite on that one. So what you do with the coastline, let me just get out of edit mode here. Uh, with the coastline, you bring it in, but when you do your Boolean on that one, let me just show you in the Boolean, what you're going to do is add it instead. So add a union and then select your coastline. So once you've got all those various different things brought in, uh, so let me just get rid of that guy right there. So we're happy with our world and the way things are set up. We come back in here and we can start importing the other stuff. Now, one of the more exciting ones is going to be the building. So I'm going to come in here, STL, and then let's grab the buildings. The buildings don't actually require any work. Uh, we basically just have to go grab Z1 and then bring them flush with our, because uh, I moved the whole city up by one, or, or sorry, the whole domain up by one. So there you see now we have our buildings are on top of our city. Some really cool stuff. Okay, so we're almost there. Uh, we got our cities brought in. So you see here we've got some uh, we got some spaces here for parks that were set up and so on. Uh, we have that river that cuts through. I didn't cut it out, so that's why you're not seeing the mesh go down here. But if we'd imported the uh, river and cut it out, this would be an empty space here. And then we would have bridges that came across. Speaking of bridges, let's bring the rest of the stuff in. So come in here, go to import, STL. So you can think of the STL as just basically pancaked layers of data. So we got the coastline split up there, rivers, roads, or so on. So let's bring the roads in. 
So here I see the roads. Let's go ahead, G, Z, one, move them up and flush. Uh, we could go ahead and apply a material to our road. Let's make our roads, I don't know, black. Okay, sounds good to me. So there we now have roads in the environment. Yeah, that might be a little too drastic. So there's our roads running through this network. Let me just go back to this, look better. Uh, now what we could do is go ahead and bring in the one last component we've got going on. So file, import, STL, and then we've got uh, the blocks. And we can bring in the blocks, and then once again, uh, G, Z, one, enter. And then some of these things, if you want them to look a little bit better, what you might wanna do is go back into edit mode. So again, hit tab, do an extrude, enter, and then a G, Z, and then the amount you wanna move it up by. So 0 0.1, there we go. So our blocks are moved up slightly. You could perform the same thing on the road because I just moved our roads down a little bit. So what I could do is come down here and go uh, G, Z, 0 0.1, moved our roads up like so, and there's everything in here to get, oh, I'm in edit mode still. Object mode. All right, and then there, what you're seeing here, and let me just go into fly mode here, is a city, procedural generated, ready for texturing, exporting, and so on. All of the uh, roads are in place. Everything is ready to go. All you need to deal with basically is, again, I didn't cut the river out, so this space would be empty because the river would carve it out if I'd done that process. And then there's also, if you imported this, the shoreline, it wouldn't drop off like it does here into the the great unknown divide. But otherwise you have a procedural city in what would, one, you know, once you know what you're doing here, literally take just a few moments time. Now, the only downside to this uh, process, and I, I know there are tools out there for this, but I don't particularly know uh, which one, is our problem is we still have our buildings here. So for example, whoa, 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 don't hit tab, don't hit tab, let's go back up. <laughs> downside to flight mode is when you hit the, uh, the tab key before leaving flight mode, it lets gravity take its place. All right, so here we go. So we're in the environment, uh, switch to building mode right here. You're gonna see these buildings are all sadly untextured. So uh, what we kind of need to do at this point in time is start texturing them. And unfortunately, this process is where I don't know a perfect way to do this yet. We're going to face mode, for example. It's really easy to texture an individual building. So basically, grab all the faces, grab the faces on all four sides. And then what you can go ahead and do is something like um, unwrap. Uh, we could do a uh, cube projection right there. And then we could go ahead and start assigning materials to it. For example, I've got, uh, let's go here, new, use nodes. Sure, sounds good to me. Uh, go over into your shader editor, like so bring in some kind of a texture. So I got one right here-ish. Uh, where did you, facade, okay, oh no, that's a zip. I want the color. All right, there we go. So we can, bring, we can bring in our texture maps like this, and then we can apply them like that. So then we have a texture in our world. The problem is we now need to um, get the texturing to work right for all of the individual buildings. So here you see, we just textured one building. Actually, I textured one side of one building. So there has to be a way out there uh, to basically say, take all the selected buildings and wrap them in this texture. I unfortunately don't know what to do on that regard. I think the easiest way would do to be is to actually probably write a script to do this. Uh, but as you can see, you could start bringing in a number of different textures and applying them in really fast. The catch is I, I don't know the ultimate way to actually showcase to you right now. So you're going to have this process. The one thing that's missing from this is texturing your stuff. And if you have a good suggestion of the best way that you come in and texture your procedurally imported 3D buildings, I'd love to hear them because, uh, I again, I don't know a wonderful way of doing this. And doing each building by hand, like I just did that one single building, that'll be painful. Again, I think it's kind of one of those things that you should be able to get into a script. So you can go here. Uh, we, can go, we can go in edit mode. We can go to buildings. We can hit A, select all the buildings. And basically there's got to be a script out there that says wrap these as if they were a building. I just don't know that script. So if you have a suggestion for a script like that, uh, I would love to hear it. Because once you get the texturing down, you're done. You're ready. You can start using these in your game of choice. And you can easily use a tool like this, City Generator, to create 3D assets that can then be exported into your game engine of choice. Some really powerful stuff. Unfortunately, the STL process is a little clunky. It'd be kind of cool if it just exported this out as a single OBJ file that you could import in and go, go from there. But, um, you know, it's not that painful for the most part especially because the buildings and all that stuff 
kind of come uh, ready to go. By the way, with the buildings, since we've got all these polygons selected right here, at any time I could have just done like a scale Z and we could start moving. You know, so if you wanted to resize your city, uh, you could easily do so. The defaults you didn't, you're not particularly stuck with. So you can change things around however you wish. And you can create some really cool cities really, really fast using this tool. Or again, like I mentioned earlier on, you can use this to create 2D style maps or uh, RPG style cities if you wanted to. And then, you know, the sky's the limit on this one. Also, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, this is an open source project. It's under the GPL3 license. Uh, there's definitely some encumbrances with GPL, so do make sure you uh, you check that license out if you're working on a closed source project or you're going to change the code in any way. You're basically going to have to contribute your changes back up to the project if you make any changes. That's one of those natures of GPL. Now, you should be able to use the contents that you create using Map Generator uh, in a closed source project. No problems there. It's just involved if you're using the source code. So if you want to use City Generator in your own game, for example, like the actual code, then you would have to make your own code also GPL v3. So it's one of those things to be aware of. But if you're just using the raw generated assets, you should be fine. There's no base mesh or anything in uh, in action here. So you should be completely good in that regard. So anyways, that is uh, City Generator, one of those cool procedural tools that are all the rage these days. Let me know what you thought. And once again, if you've got a cool suggestion for quickly texturing, box texturing, a selection of buildings, I would love to hear it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.